I'm very grateful to all of you that have been following along with what I've been doing with the Los Angeles Philharmonic. It was a fantastic week. We had shows on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and they were all extremely well attended. Now today I want to talk about something different as it relates to having a piece like this played on such a grand stage. And actually it relates a lot to what we're used to seeing when we watch movies. When you watch a movie, for example, oftentimes you would actually read the review before going to the film. You decide, okay, is this something that I wanna see? Is it worth my time? You would see that rating on Rotten Tomatoes. So you would kinda of get an idea of how good the film is according to a bunch of different critics before you actually see the movie. In the concert music world, it's completely different. The piece actually gets performed and then there's a review that happens after the whole thing is done. Actually, I think I like it better this way because it gives the audience a chance to come up with their own decision on whether they like something or not, not relying on some critic that has his or her own opinion about what they just saw or heard. That all being said, I'm gonna show you two reviews. The first review is quite positive, almost too positive. And the second review is, well, I'll let you figure out what the second review is gonna be about. The first review is from a site called Bach Track, and if you just look at the headline, I mean, you can already tell what this review is gonna be about. It says, Sad Haddad premiere shines alongside Hilary Hahn at Walt Disney Concert Hall. It's a little bit uncomfortable to have my name listed there first on the headline, but I'm grateful that he actually liked the piece. So let's see what he had to say. So if I keep going down here, it says it was headlined by Hilary Hahn, most enlivened by Sad Haddad's cinematic I Sheen, in which the composer stretches conventional Western harmonies with a gentle, masterful hand, leavened with Eastern influence. So, so far, so good. I can't complain. That's exactly what I was trying to do. Then he says, composed in 2023, the 10-minute piece employs a system of melodic modes used to recite the Quran called the Makamat, starting in silence. It grew more intense and a sheen of strings, yada, yada. All very good stuff. I'm not gonna complain. All very good stuff. I'm the kind of person, I don't know if you can figure this out by now, where I don't get too up with the highs and I don't get too low with the lows. You'll see about the lows a little bit later. Moving on, I'm gonna kind of skip ahead here to the end. He says, as the music resumed, the heart finally stopped beating and the silence returned after which the audience were doubly ready to stand and cheer. So that's a very positive review. I'm gonna leave the link down in the description below if you wanna read the rest of it. And if you look at the real estate of the review here, which I think is very telling when you're trying to figure out what a critic is paying attention to, you'll see that a lot of it actually has to do with my piece, almost half of the whole review, while the rest of it had to do with the Sibelius Violin Concerto and the Tchaikovsky Swan Lake. My piece, by the way, was 10 minutes long and the whole program was like an hour and a half. So it kind of gives you a sense of what the critic is paying attention to. So if we take a look at the second review from a site called Stage and Cinema, you'll see that the headline is completely different. It just says Sibelius and Swan Lake, kind of a basic title. It doesn't really tell you much about what the critic is gonna think about the rest of the program. Let's continue, shall we? So he starts off as you would expect describing the first piece on the program, which was my piece. But then listen to what happens next. Aisheen begins with the bass drum thumping a soft heartbeat, soon joined by droning cellos and basses, Ryan Gold style. I'm glad that he caught that, by the way. A promising enough start, but then the brass starts blowing air through their horns. Uh-oh. Years of new music at LA Phil's Green Umbrella series have conditioned me to receive blown air as a harbinger of incoming musical asparagus. Now, I actually like asparagus, so I didn't mind this comment. And by the way, for those of you that don't know, LA Phil's Green Umbrella series, this is the new music series that they do basically every Tuesday. So that's what he's talking about when he's talking about the Green Umbrella. Moving on. Each time I tense up, but force myself to think, maybe, maybe, this time a new short piece will turn into a magnificent tone poem. Surely, this time will be different. <laughs> It never is. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, this guy, I mean, clearly he just doesn't like anything new. I mean, anything past, and you'll see what composer he ascribes as, as a new composer, and you'll see kind of what, the, what context we're talking about here. Then on cue, the rest of the strings joined in with noisy chaos. And then, by the way, he actually plugs my YouTube channel, the channel that you're watching right now. He actually plugs the demo right here. So I actually appreciate that. That means more eyes on the piece itself. So thank you so much for doing that. Okay, let's keep going. I want to read the whole thing. I mean, look how much real estate is given to this review here. Eventually, the chaos gave way to something like cohesion and harmony. That's not bad, right? But then it returned even worse than before. 
The bass and cellos maintained a stable undercurrent, but the remainder of the orchestra sounded like they were warming up. They could have played the exact same noodling as when I was getting into my seat, and it would have sounded no different. The contrast with the bass line is an interesting idea, but by that point, I was over it. I have friends who dismiss Richard Wagner's music as noise. They have no clue what noise is. That goes to show you that even himself, he's, he's kind of almost alluding Wagner as almost like a new music composer. I wonder what he thinks of Stravinsky or Debussy or any of these kind of people that were in the 20th century or even someone like Bella Bartok. I wonder what people think of this kind of music. Nothing that I did in this piece was anything new. Probably every single thing in this piece has been done in the last 60, 70 years. So it's kind of interesting to see what a negative Nelly this guy is. The rest of the review, it's almost the same amount of time that he spent on my piece as he did for the rest of the entire concert. So it's interesting both of the reviewers spent about the same amount of time talking about my piece which took up like a tenth of the entire program so basically you can see by my kind of lighthearted way of reading both of these reviews when you get a review whether it's very positive or very negative basically what I want the conclusion I want you to get out of this is that it doesn't really matter whether it's positive or negative I mean I'm glad that anybody is writing anything about my music I guess that's really the main takeaway as long as somebody cares enough to say that they like the piece or hate the piece, that's really what the main thing is. The thing I don't like at all is when somebody just has one line about my piece or it's like a very tepid kind of rehashing of my program note. That way I know for sure that the critic didn't really care. But the fact that both of these critics had a diametrically opposing view of my piece, all it shows is that I just hit some kind of nerve, whether it was very positive or very negative. So I hope you enjoyed these reviews as much as I did. Both of them are down in the description below and I'll see you next time.